welcome Lamin. Um, Lamin is here today to represent uh, UNESCO ASP Net in the Gambia. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, um, Betty, and thank you, um, the UK government, um, and everyone who is present here. I'm really thrilled to be part of uh, this conference. So I am um, the ASP.NET National Coordinator um, in the Gambia, um, and I am presenting um, to you our concept and ideas about ASP.NET and what we have been doing over the years. So virtually, that's uh, what you can see online. That's me. Um, um, you can see I love the sea. So um, this morning, I think I shared a video um, about the beach um, this morning in our WhatsApp group. So um, now you may want to know um, that we in the Gambia, we work closely, ASP.NET and the, uh, the National Federation of UNESCO clubs. We work closely together, uh, so much so that um, sometimes it's difficult to tell um, who is who. So um, that's a group of young people um, from both the UNESCO club and the ASP.NET, you know, um, uh, um, visiting the UNESCO quarter, um, regional headquarters in the Dakar. Um, in our ASP.NET um, network, we have um, altogether 20 schools. Formerly, it used to be um, 21, um, but um, some of the schools are no longer existing. So um, therefore, this is the list of schools in our network. We have senior secondary school 12, um, upper basic school five, and lower basic school three. Um, now, I want to start with the saying, um, since uh, a lot of us work in the area of peace building and peace maintenance, especially given the UNESCO uh, philosophy about building peace in the minds of men. Um, this is a Mandinka proverb, um, which says, Faran in Jambakatamo, Basically, what it means is that um, people who are neighbors really have to look out for each other. Um, it, it's the story about two types of uh, shrubs in the forest. You know, if something bad is happening to the other and the other is not looking out for that, um, what is befalling the, the companion shrub, um, eventually, if something happens to, it can happen to both of them. So if we translate that into one of the English sayings is that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Um, and now the logic of this saying is for the occupiers of the earth to live in a symbiotic existence, meaning humans, animals, both terrestrial and aquatic, and as well as the forest. We need to look out for each other um, on earth, but basically as the chief actors on earth, we human beings really have to watch our action to make sure that it doesn't destroy um, the um, symbiotic existence that we have with both human, um, 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 both animals and the forest, that is uh, trees. Um, I say this because whatever we do to the earth comes back to us. And generally, when we take a look at what we do at the National Commission for UNESCO with our ASP.NET, um, we have had a lot of engagement in terms of um, some participation programs that we organize. We have this one called Promotion of Youth and Student Engagement in the celebration of uh, the 20th anniversary of the UNESCO Slave Food Project. Now that is the TST, Transatlantic Slave Trade. Um, during the, and also we have the Youth Students Engagement to Foster Global Citizenship Sustainable Development Initiatives and peace building in the Gambia, as well as uh, water for sustainable livelihoods, promoting um, promoting uh, water resources management in the SPNet schools and UNESCO clubs. We also have had uh, women and youth engagement through disaster risk management for a sustainable um, climate action. Now, I just want to, among all this, I just want to highlight on the issue of the transatlantic slave trade. Um, which um, kind of aligns with the UNESCO's uh, anniversary of the uh, Slave Road Project. Now, during the time that we were um, um, implementing this program, um, you may want to know, um, because outwardly, um, slavery will kind of um, um, deal with um, 
discrimination at the larger scale. But even within our communities, we have um, some conflict, you know, or if you like, you know, um, um, inhibiting conflicts that can exist among ethnics, ethnicities, you know, in terms of political um, um, appointments or in terms of even political um, canvassing for positions, you know. So in our context, we really have to translate, you know, what happens at the world stage in terms of discrimination, in terms of racism, you know, but also within our community in terms of ethnic, you know, um, biases. You know, so much so that we have to talk about this, make radio programs to make sure that people are aware that they don't need to um, kind of discriminate each other in terms of their religion, in terms of gender, in terms of um, their sex uh, and other um, alignments. You know, so we have had a lot of radio programs and uh, we were able to have uh, theatrical performances, you know, where students came up uh, with some performances that were inspired by the Amazing Grace uh, video. Um, we also have had discussions um, with historians and also history teachers in the schools. There was also the observance of the International Peace uh, Day, September 24th, which had um, some music and sports and the promotion of peace and nonviolence. Now, when it comes to um, the youth engagement to foster global citizenship, you know, um, and sustainable development initiative in the Gambia, um, what we have done is to kind of collaborate um, with um, organizations such as UNFPA, you know, and also Peace Ambassadors of the Gambia, because we know that um, comparatively, they have some advantages when it comes to um, talking about um, reproductive health, as well as in terms of peace building. The Peace Ambassadors have been in that field for a long time. So we have to collaborate with them to make sure that our students and also some of the UNESCO club members, you know, would have to learn um, uh, peace building uh, initiatives and also um, uh, take up peace education as their fields of interest. And what is beautiful about this is that um, people who have graduated from our ASPNet uh, schools will kind of transit because UNESCO clubs are both community-based and also um, um, com community based and school based. So we 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 had to we they they share their interest when they leave school with uh, UNESCO clubs. So the concepts of GSG set were introduced to them, and uh, when we look at um, water for sustainable livelihood, this was promoted in our um, UNESCO clubs um, as well as ASPNet schools. You know, we raise their awareness of teachers, students in the utilization and management of water, develop training manual on water education, train teachers on innovation such as development of prototypes on water treatments, recycling and purification of household usage. We also train students to prepare prototypes that help them in the utilization of water with a great emphasis on girls. Now, some of our schools, especially this particular school, is in an area where the uh, river water is very fresh. So sometimes the locals will go to the, um, to the river, you know, to fetch water and uh, they utilize this. Now, if they kind of use the water straight away from the river, um, they ca it can contaminate. Um, so we treating, asking students to learn how to treat, you know, contaminated water was very essential. And you can see um, the facilitator here, you know, uh, trying to help the students on how to build the prototype, but as well, they were taught how to purify um, water, you know, and uh, this was very, uh, very useful for the students. Um, here you can see the teachers, you know, who are also um, put up, who are also on the training, and they learned how to, um, to purify water uh, for water conservation. They also, um, now, when it comes to climate change, um, like I said, you know, our relationship with our environment is supposed to be such that we don't destroy it, but we use it in a judicious manner, judicious way, you know, so much so that it will become sustainable and uh, the generations that will come after us will be able to utilize and benefit from the forest resources. So therefore we had to engage, you know, our communities and also our students in issues um, related to sustainable climate action um, through disaster risk management. So um, here, our different uh, um, climate 
uh, change related policies, you know, were kind of uh, brought out in our awareness raising as well as the SDG six, which had to do with water and sanitation. We had to sensitize um, our communities on this, how to use them. And in our sensitization, we had to kind of um, uh, pay much emphasis to the participation of women and youth on early warning system between uh, for disaster preparedness and uh, emergencies and resilience, innovative agricultural practices. We also embark on cleanup exercise and reforestation um, in our communities. We train youth on alternative use of um, energy. You know that here people use um, the forest a lot when it comes to their cooking. People go to the forest to um, fetch firewood and uh, they use it for their cooking. So uh, if you can teach them, you know, sustainable um, alternative means of making, you know, um, um, fuel wood for their cooking, it was very, very important. And energy saving um, stove, where also they were taught how to make them and also how to use the briquettes, you know, which can be um, used when we use these uh, drop leaves from trees, dried leaves, and also groundnut husks, you know, to kind of make uh, briquettes for their charcoal instead of cutting the forest and burning charcoal from there. So these were very, very relevant um, uh, initiatives that we have engaged our um, community of students in. Now here, um, we actually um, took time, you know, to go to our schools and plant trees with them and encourage them to, to not only plant trees, but to grow them because planting, um, you just put it in the ground, but growing them means nurturing them to maturity so that they can escape from whatever um, uh, can harm them. So we encourage our schools, you know, to, to grow trees. And what um, this has done was to able to tell them that you can, the trees that you plant, you can benefit from them. Um, you can benefit uh, from trees by bringing fruit trees, build, uh, uh, planting fruit trees, growing them. But you can also do wooded trees at the point where when you need to construct um, for your school, you can use these trees you know, to cut them for your timber instead of going into the forest or trying to buy timber that can be very expensive. So we ask them to kind of grow a mini forest within their school garden or farms, you know, so much so that it will be bought for um, fruit trees like cashew nuts, which is a commercial uh, cast tree now. It's a commercial tree in the Gambia where you can gain a lot of funds from. And you can also uh, plant trees such as the mahogany and the malina, which when they mature, you can cut them in a sustainable way and use the wood for the school building project. So Do you can see- Lamin, I'm really sorry, but we've absolutely run out of time because we've got the next speaker. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, it's okay, thank it, you. Thank we've, you. we've run over just ever so slightly. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Lamin. Thank you, um, thank you. It's been so interesting. And we will share all the slides with people um, who are attending the conference. Thank you so much. I am honored and humbled. Thank you.